Jeremy Cook here for Haxer.io. In my last video, I introduced the NRF Thingy 91X, which has some incredible capabilities out of the box. However, what's really interesting is its potential as a development kit for low power cellular applications. In this video, I'll show how to install basic modem shell firmware on the Thingy 91X using VS Code. Nordic's NRF 54L15-DK board will be used to assist with flashing duties. I'll then evaluate power consumption with Nordic's excellent power profiler kit 2. I'll unbox the two supporting devices here, and you can refer back to video one for the Thingy 91X unboxing. So let's get started. All right, so we got this NRF 54L15 development kit because it actually makes the programming quite a bit faster, or so I'm told. But let's see what's in the box. All right, so we got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here. So hopefully, I can try this out and you know, just see how, see how well it programs it. Uh, some GPIO pins, looks like digital I/O. One, two, three. So yeah, some interesting stuff here. So that'll be a good board to use. Oh, and I almost missed this. It's a, looks like a little antenna. So don't miss that in the package. Looks interesting. So the other thing I'd like to take a look at is this Power Profiler Kit 2, power measurement tool. The uh, Nordic Semiconductor stuff, it's supposed to be very, very power efficient. So that would be very cool to test this out. I feel like these nice little thin cardboard boxes are kind of kind of neat. Jumper wires, that's, that's good. Power Profiler Kit 2 by Nordic Semiconductor. Pretty little board. See if we can use that for something, obviously testing out the power. I don't know if this is where this goes. I would have to assume so, VCC. So, got the red, the ground, and plugs in. Appears to plug in there. It appears to be the right place, although I haven't read a manual or anything on this. Again, got that there. Nicely uh, color-coded, so should be easier to remember. So yeah, looks like this is a nice, uh, nice board. Looks good for what it is, but obviously we'll see how, see how it works. First, set up the required software tools. This will include NRF Connect, Segger, JLink, and VS Code with the NRF Connect extension pack. Software is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and I'll be using Macintosh for this demo. Installation is slightly different for each system, and the process is laid out in Lesson 1, Exercise 1 of the Nordic Dev Academy NRF Connect SDK Fundamentals course. I suggest also going through at least Exercise 2, where you build and flash your first Blinky application. So one, one final piece of this puzzle, I need a cable to connect things up. It's a two by five, 1.27 millimeter spacing connector. Got uh, two sides of that, it's female. Plugs in the unit, the um, Thingy 91X, as well as the uh, programming board, I believe. So that's one more thing you need. You know, not too, not too expensive, even for a two pack. While it's possible to flash the Thingy 91X via onboard debugging, it's easier to use the NRF 54L15 DK board that I just unboxed. Connect the DK board up to your computer via USB and optionally hook up the Thingy 91X as well for power. There we go. And hook that up to the computer. All right. And actually I'm gonna take the orange case off so to make it a little easier to access everything. All right, so the other thing that we'll need to do is connect the Thingy 91X to the NRF 54L15 DK's debug out port via a 10 pin 1.27 millimeter ribbon cable. It should be keyed on both sides to keep the wiring consistent. So um, let's see, ensure the switch on the side of the Thingy is set to the NRF 91 for flashing. So that, that'll be actually like this way, this little switch here, if you can see that. And then we'll hook this up, let's see, debug out port that we'll plug in here. So you need to ensure that the switch on the side is set to set to that side, which is the uh, NRF 91 for flashing. It's got two things in there, two settings. Other side says NRF 53, but just, just make sure it's pointing that way. Um, also need to actually turn the power on on this. So turn that power on with that switch right there. Turn the power on here as well. Although I guess that power is on, so off and on. That's good, we just gotta load the blinky sketch and flash. So we'll do that right now. So for this, we got the Blinky Sketch pulled up. So first thing we'll need to do is go into, let's see, go there, let's see, add build configuration. So this will actually show how it's supposed to be built. Uh, NRF toolchain, board target, thingy. We'll do this one and everything else should be good. So we'll generate that and build. So this will take, take a little while. So we'll let that get going. So presuming everything's done correctly here, I should be able to flash it from the DK board, dash DK board to the Thingy 91X. All right, so look at connected devices. Just take a look at that. NRF, there we go. All right, I don't even think you have to click on it, but click flash and I'm gonna click this uh, flash, erase and flash board because I'm just gonna take it all out of there. You can flash it and it doesn't always do all that. So I'll do that if you have a problem, you know, that's, that's usually a good thing to do. So hit the erase 
and it's programming and let's see what happens. Programming complete, should be flashing. All right, one thing you have to do sometimes is actually turn it off and turn it back on. Turn it off, turn it back on. Oh, and there we go, look at that. You know, as I said in that movie, you know, flash, oh, it's a miracle, but it's not a miracle, it's, uh, it's science, right? It's science. So, it's supposed to work like that, everything worked as it was supposed to, and we're blinking our thing, so that's awesome. Also, this is battery operated, so if you unplug this, should keep flashing along, so kind of cool, cool has that hardware in it. The next thing I want to do is put a modem shell program on this so that we can do some testing on that and kind of see the, uh, the power requirements of everything. So what we'll do, we'll go into the uh, to VS Code and load this up, create a new application, and we'll uh, copy a sample as we've done before, and then we'll say modem underscore shell sample. So we'll load this up, shell four, that should be fine. Open that, there we go. We'll, we'll go ahead and scan for kids, why not? All right, so now I'll go back into here. So we'll add a build configuration there. Pops up, all we need to do for board target is, let's see, thingy, thingy 91X slash NRF 9151 slash NS. So all we need to select there, generate and build. And this will take a few minutes to, to go through this and actually build it. All right, now with that complete, I should be able to use the dash DK board and flash it onto my thingy 91X. So let's go into, let's see. Connected devices, we'll go ahead and check that out there. And it should be connected to that, connected to the NRF. So we'll do go ahead and erase and flash board, and that should flash that. All right, programming complete. And as, as I've done before, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it off and turn it back on with this. Turn it back off, turn it back on with that little, little switch there. And I should be able to connect to it via the serial monitor. So if I bring this up, I've got to pull it up there, which is kind of a funny thing to do. Actually, we'll go ahead and plug in plug this in directly to the computer. So just connect this, plug this in via USB. And that's directly connected to my Macintosh computer. And I should be able to pull this up, do NRF serial terminal, and we'll go ahead and do slash dev slash TTY slash USB modem 14402. I'm not quite sure what the 14405 does, but this one seems to work better. At least that's been my experience. So should be able to type something in there. That's gibberish, of course, but uh, AT, uh, AT command. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, ping minus D google.com. There you go. And so it pings, pings google.com and, and we're, we're in business. It's operating on the cellular modem here. So we don't have to set anything up as far as like uh, security or anything like that. It's already, already handled by that. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Don't have to like put in your Wi Fi credentials or anything like that. From here, we'll, we'll hook it up to the power profile or kit two board. And we'll see just some of the characteristics of it. So that should be pretty neat. So one thing with off-grid applications, with such as you might be developing with a Thingy 91X, is uh, battery power efficiency. So if you want things something to be off-grid for a long time without recharging, definitely important that it sips power. Now, uh, Nordic has this neat power profiler kit too, that you can actually hook up to this via their little current measurement slash debug board. And you plug it in here and it actually gets all of its power out of here. It's got some circuitry to do that for, for development. Here you got your grounds, your two ground lines, and uh, power power in and power out through these two lines, the way it's hooked up there. Now these grounds, you don't need both of them hooked up, but and in fact it's all, yeah, I guess in theory, grounded through your computer, but better to have it closer the better, I, I suppose. So let's go ahead and hook this up to the computer first, make sure it's working. Just ping dash d google.com d. All right, cool, so that's, that's working out good, working out well, and we will hook this up. Let's see, it's micro USB, so it's got a uh, power only and a data slash power line. Hook that up, data slash power. I guess if you need more power, you can hook up another one, but we don't need that. And got that hooked up, plug that in there, and, and that should actually cut it off because once it's plugged in, the power is supplied by this, and it's not supplying power yet. But if we go into NRF, NRF connect for desktop, power profiler, open that up, and then we'll go into data logger, which, which comes up by automatic. There's also a scope setting, but I'm going to go into data logger. And then select device, uh, power profiler kit 2, that's what we want. Should load up. Let's see, enable power output. Got it at 3307 millivolts, so that's uh, about 3.3 volts. I think it can be powered by more than that, but that should work out all right. 
And we'll go ahead and start the logging before we turn the power on so we can see what, what happens on the, the boot up. So go ahead and start. And yeah, nano amp branch because it's not doing anything. But we'll turn the power on and you can see there the uh, average power, it goes up quite a bit and then it'll go down soon. So yeah, 50 milliamps spiking, spiking um, at almost 200 milliamps. And then after that, it goes, goes way down. So we'll go ahead and do the mini view for three seconds. And you can see there the average is 1.45 milliamps. Um, you know, one thing here, it's actually powering the UART, which allows us to communicate with it. So, you know, even that's something that, you know, you need to think about when, with low power applications. So if we do uh, UART disable 10, this will disable the UART for 10 seconds. And actually, um, if we look at this, yeah, the, the average power goes down, let's see, to the, to the microamps range. So yeah, you can see that 773 microamps. I think I've seen it lower than that, maybe, you know, in the 500 range, but it's, um, yeah, very, very impressive how little power it, it takes up. Now, of course, you, and then in this case, you don't want the UART to be off for forever because we've got to experiment with it, but let's just see, go back into 10 seconds. And you can see that it's, it's spiking every once in a while. I guess it's phoning home to see if there's any changes, I'd have to assume, and then it just goes into low power mode most of the time. So if we wanted to go ahead and do a ping, ping Google, so we'll do something active for just a little bit and we'll see what, see what happens. You can see there, when it does something active for a little while, the, uh, the current consumption goes up significantly, but then when it's done, it goes, goes back down. So yeah, I, I thought that was really cool, just the, the way they have it set up with the, uh, the Thingy91X, just the way that it's set up for testing. You know, it's, it's a neat device, in and of itself, but it's definitely set up to go ahead and test stuff for your IoT device. It's definitely made for development, which which I think is, is awesome. And this power profiler kit too, of course, you know, it's, it's useful for the Thingy91X, but certainly this will be useful for all kinds of other things too. So the video is not really about the, the uh, power profiler kit too, but I think it's a great device and really clever how the Thingy91X has this, this uh, evaluation board that you just plug in and hooks up to this without doing any sort of hacky stuff with it. Pretty neat. The Thingy91X is an awesome development kit for cellular implementation in low power off-grid devices. It also features Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication, plus location via Wi-Fi, cellular, and satellite. Other capabilities like an onboard battery get you prototyping a low power IoT thing in record time. I'm looking forward to using this hardware in my next video, which is still a bit of a work in progress, but the results should be really cool. Check back to see how it turns out. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook for Hackster.io, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.